God bless you. My name is Joel Comiskey. And in this video, I want to talk about cell or small group myths and truths. And, you know, it's easy to put rules over your small groups that actually end up hindering the growth of your cell or small group ministry. And I'd like to just pinpoint some myths that can actually end up hindering you as you do small groups in your church. And the first myth is that all groups must be homogeneous. There was one famous church in Latin America that said, you know, all the groups must be men's groups, women's groups, youth groups, children's groups. That's the homogeneity because there's an anointing over those categories. But the truth is that to allow homogeneity to naturally develop as cells multiply. In other words, start with a definition, a holistic definition. I love the definition groups of three to 15 that meet weekly outside the church building for the purpose of evangelism, community, and spiritual growth with the goal of making disciples who make disciples that results in multiplication. Quality definition, normally family groups are the bread and butter of most churches, but then homogeneity can flow naturally. Perhaps a men's group will pop out of that or a women's group. You know, so there's just a flexibility, but start with a definition. That's the most important thing. Don't follow legalistic rules about homogeneity. Another myth is that one person should be the designated host. In other words, some cell churches say, well, you just really first have to have a host separate from the leader, then you can start the group. But the truth is that a shared hosting arrangement is often the best option. In other words, there's nothing wrong with rotating among the members. Or sometimes the leader will open his or her home. You know, sometimes in the New Testament, the same person that was the leader of the group was also the host. And, you know, I think that that's true in cell ministry today. Sometimes the leader will open his or her house and lead the group. Or members will rotate. Maybe one member will take one month, another member another month. I mean, it's great if another person can host the group each week. That's probably ideal. But don't make that a legalistic rule that the only way you can do cell ministry if that is what happens. Now, another myth is asking everyone to be, to be in a cell stifles the use of spiritual gifts. And there are some churches that actually say, come to my church, you can start your own ministry, you can do whatever you want to do. And it seems real spiritual. And then when you say, oh, well, you know, everyone needs to be in a small group or a cell, they think, oh, that's legalistic. But the truth is the cell group is the best place to discover spiritual gifts. And so asking each person to be in a cell, a house church, actually helps them to grow, to, to use their spiritual gifts. Remember, all of the gift passages in the New Testament were written to house churches. And so when we say to people, be in a small group, you know, learn to practice the one another's to understand your spiritual gifts, and then you can choose a ministry in the church. That's actually helping that person become a disciple who makes a disciple. Now, another myth is that the cell church is all about the cell. But the truth is that the goal of the cell church is to make disciples. It's really not all about the cell. I'm really not a, a cell person. I'm a person that really wants to make disciples. And Jesus told us to make disciples in the small group. That was his context. I mean, that's what he did. He sent his disciples into the home. The early church was a house-to-house -house movement. So it's the best place to make disciples. Now, another myth is that cells are an extension of the Sunday service. You know, it's just a way to keep people into the Sunday service. But the truth is, the cell is the church. The word ecclesia and the New Testament was used for the house church, the church in the house of Aquila, Priscilla, the church in the house of Mary, and so on. And so we believe that the cell is the church. That leader who's leading the cell is pastoring the church. Now, we believe that the Sunday celebration is also the church. The word ecclesia is used also for the larger gathering. But we must elevate that cell to the place of realizing it is the church. 
Now, another myth is cells should encompass all small groups. In a lot of churches say, hey, whatever your small group is, it might be a prison ministry task group, it might be the board, that's a cell, that's the small group. You know, say that everything is a small group. But the truth is, start with a quality definition. If everything is a small group, well, then nothing's a small group. You know, I believe I love that definition, groups of three to 15 that meet weekly outside the church building for the purpose of evangelism, community, and spiritual growth with the goal of making disciples who make disciples. If the group is just meeting once a month, you're not going to make a quality disciple. Pastor, God is going to use you. He's using you right now. Don't give up. Remember, the goal is to make disciples who make disciples. And I believe that this book, Myths and Truths of the Cell-Based Church, will help you avoid landmines and guide your church in the right way. God bless you. If you like this video, please click on like and subscribe to our channel, but also check out the resources on our website.